I'm privileged to say that I have in the studio Mr. Peter McMenu, former Western Virginia chairman of the MPP, former national chair of the MPP. Uh, he's been in and out of the MPP almost in every, you know, very sensitive position. And today, among the 40 individuals penciled down to lead the MPP 2024 campaign, especially for the running, the, the, the flag bearer, uh, Vice President Dr. Mamadou Baumia, is Mr. Peter McMenu, and he will serve the role as electoral affairs manager, if you like. And this afternoon, he joins me in the studio to look at the parties, uh, the composition, the strategy going to 2024. Are there reforms that they are hoping to put before the Electoral Commission? These are the matters that we'll be discussing. And your questions, your comments are welcome via our social media pages. Mr. Bankman, you're welcome. Thank you, Elton. So, I mean, you're always in a take of affairs. I mean, I've followed you from the Western region to the national office in in power and in opposition and today you are leading the party uh, as far as the electoral affairs is concerned first before we go into the composition the electoral commission has already made it clear that they will maintain the december 7th date for the 2024 elections what is your reaction to this i know i know the party had wanted it moved to november well i think that uh, if the electoral commission has ultimately decided to stick to the seventh December date mm -hmm. is well in order because there were some form of uh, agitations against it. So it's a matter of time. I think we will eventually get there. Mm. As many of the stakeholders were urging them to go up to 2028 so that they have enough time to prepare. The last time that this matter came up in 2016. Uh, it was put up in July 2016. And it was about four or five months to elections. So everybody thought that the timing was too short. Besides, there was a voters registration exercise and other uh, activities lined up, right. which perhaps overburdened the Electoral Commission. This time they came in let me say January, but there's still a lot of items lined up in an election year. Mm -hmm. So looking at that, it's only good that they don't get entangled in some activities which they can finish. Because mm -hmm. this one, it will mean going to parliament, yes. mean amending the law. At the same time, you need support of the entire, of the entire uh, uh, house. My, my, my understanding was that this was just going to require, with a CI, uh, 21 days to mature and then it becomes a law. Well, after is, the, this is not uh, a CI. After the, 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 the constitutional imperative have been removed. Aha, uh -huh. so that's where the, the difficulty is. Mm -hmm. The constitutional imperative before the CI. And it involves a lot of work. Mm. Because, um, for example, um, um, you see, we must be open and get more people, more stakeholders on board. Mm -hmm. I keep saying that many a time we limit ourselves only to political actors. Mm -hmm. But some decisions of the Electoral Commission has implications for the broader society. So a lot of consultation, even outside the political actors, will be necessary. But, but, but yet you, 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 you have supported the November 7th date. Even with, all yes, the, 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 even with all the challenges that you because are Because in 2015, mm -hmm. this matter had come up, okay? And when it came up in 2015, we thought that the ECOWAS and the AU protocol mm -hmm. on elections and good governance stipulated clearly that six months to elections, you cannot make major reforms right. in elections timetable. Mm -hmm. So the timing was absolutely wrong. And Ghana is a signatory to the ECOWAS protocol as well as the AU mm -hmm. protocol. But this time, it was in January, which is about nine, ten months. So we thought that if the EC can vouch and say mm -hmm. that they have enough time looking at other jobs that need to be done for the D-Day and post-D-Day activities, mm -hmm. Fine. Fine enough. So we didn't say per se that we agree in total, but if they, they were yeah, in a position to meet. Us mm -hmm. that other activities lined up could be done seamlessly, then the timing is all right within the AU 
and the ECOWAS protocols. So we will support it. The, 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 another issue that the issue cleared yesterday was the fact that in 2024, they were still used in indelible ink. You know, earlier there's been suggestions that they were going to phase it off. But the issue says the indelible ink will still be used uh, in December. No, they, they, they haven't said that. Now, yesterday, they I, said it was under consideration. Yes, but today they've made, yesterday they made it clear that they will still use the indelible ink in 2024. Very well. Mm -hmm. And we also said that voters wanted an identity to even show to the family, to the public, that they had voted. Mm -hmm. And in our system, it is the indelible ink which is used as a mark. So we did not oppose the reintroduction or staying on of the mm -hmm. uh, indelible ink. We didn't. We didn't oppose. But, but for, for, from where you sit, are you okay with the way the Electoral Commission is conducting itself as we move closer and closer to 2024, December especially, even though we are here to see the, the time? Well, I think if you listen to our national organizer sometime last week, was it on your channel? He boldly confronted the Electoral Commission to come out with their timetable. Yeah. Right. Time we still don't have it yet. Yes, but I, running out, we are, I we are also saw Mr. Dr. The Bosman, Bosman on your, on your, on almost, your outlet yes. saying that within the next week or so, they will bring it. Mm. So let's wait for the next week or so and then see the nitty gritty of the activities lineup. Mm. Then we know. Let, let, let me ask you a personal question. And I'm, I'm asking because you've been a chairman of the party in opposition and in power at the same time. I'm asking because, you know, the Electoral Commission is supposed to be a neutral body. The NDC, they've always viewed the Electoral Commission steps with suspicion. Is it an opposition disease? Or what, because depending on where you are, you always have issues this, with the conduct this, of the Electoral this, Commission this, in Electoral this Matters. Matter has, this question has come up several times. Mm -hmm. But you see, I think that it's about time that we broke that suspicion, that lingers, either in opposition or in government, about the activities of the electorate. How do we do it? And for me, mm -hmm. we, what we do is for the EC to be as transparent and open as possible and to listen to stakeholders as they have done recently in respect of the, uh, the date mm -hmm. and the, the, the ink. And after, ink. and after 30 years of practicing constitutional rule, you think that the East still has a lot more to do to be, to, to be seen, to be transparent, neutral? Elton, mm -hmm. so 30 years is long for you, eh? And some people have practiced democracy for over 200 years and they still continue to make changes and amend because we don't live in a static society. So every now and then, there are, the, the dynamics of society makes it imperative that there are bound to be changes as we move on. But 30 years is not enough. Mm -hmm. you, do you know when the first time in the UK that secret ballot was enacted? 1872, Google. So how many years now? Over but they still years. continue. Yes. And I think about a few years ago, they made amendments for voters to carry ID cards. So, so don't say 30 years. 30 years is what? In the life of a country or democracy is a journey. And you never finish that journey. So 30 years out of that journey is nothing. All right. So we, 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 we are having a conversation with Mr. Peter McMenu. He's a member of the, uh, the MPP's 2024 election team. And he's in charge of electoral affairs. Uh, now, Mr. Manu, let's get into this matter. And I want to believe that we are consulted before you heard your name. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. I know. And some say 40. And the names in here, I mean, <laughs> I mean someone will say the biggest of the, of the biggest. I mean, Kwabunai Japan, these are the, I mean, the, the big guys in the MPP, if you like. You've, you, have, you have assembled your best to prosecute a campaign for 2024 election. But concerns about how you're going to manage these egos. From where you sit, how are you going to progress on this on this issue going forward? And the first thing you must look at the objective of the campaign mm -hmm. and whether all of us share or buy into it. And I can assure you that we all buy and share into that objective. The what is objective the objective? Is to break the eight. Mm -hmm. 
Nigeria, we want to win for a third time, make history in this country. The democratic journey must continue with the MPP in power. That's the objective. And all the people you are talking about, we share that objective. So there's not going to be any differences. Once we share the same objective, we will all align and do our bits to make the whole uh, prosper and win an election. And, and you think breaking the AIDS will be easy, looking at the current state of affairs? Oh, I think there is no easy election anywhere. Even in Soviet Union, where Navalny has been uh, either murdered or died or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, election is not, I don't think Putin takes it easy that there's going to be an easy election. There's nothing called easy election anywhere. No. So we are going to work hard and we'll continue to work hard on the ground, drill down to the ground to win an election. Nobody is going to hand us the, 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 the victory on silver platter. Mm. We have to work hard for it and we are prepared to do that. And, and why should Ghanaians buy into this product that you are, you, you are presenting to us? What is the product? The product is your flag bearer, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Oh, the party, and for that matter, the constitution, and for that matter, our internal arrangements brought him up in a democratic way, uh, consistent with the 1992 constitution. I think it's Article 55 something which is that the internal organization of political parties has conformed to democratic practices. So we, we went through that manner and elected him. So everybody must come on board. Mm -hmm. So it means we have faith. The party machinery, the party rank and file. Anyone who believes in democracy, in the internal democracy of the party. And let me tell you, recently during our our, our sitting MPs uh, internal elections. Right. Some two people came from Nigeria to have a look at how MPP uh, does their uh, internal the parliamentary elections. Primaries. They were here mm -hmm. in your studio. Did you see how, 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 how surprised they were about the beauty of MPP's internal democracy, the superb nature of it? So if we have come out through this system and a candidate, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, has come emerged as the winner. Who am I? Who are you? If you believe in our internal democracy, sanctioned by the national uh, constitution, you have to follow. But again, you, you are presenting him to the, the Ghanaian voter. You are not only presenting him to MPP voters. And for that reason, they, they will look at your track record to decide whether they want to renew the mandate of the MPP or not. Now, Dr. Baumia appears to have his own ideas, if elected, how he wants to, you know, uh, lead the country. Some of them are quite a departure from what exists currently. And questions have been raised about whether or not he's running away from the record of the Akufuado-led administration. I don't know what your reaction to this. I think yeah, there is an error in your question. You only mentioned the past. But voters don't rely only on the past. They rely on the past and the future. And that's exactly what Dr. Baumia stands for. He's not running away from anything. He's being candid. And he's giving assurances of the future. What the future holds for Ghana under his presidency, which is going to come on January 2025. So he has given his track record. Then he goes on to say what he will do in the future. Mm -hmm. Perfect. But the present is, is what we are witnessing now, and that is economic difficulties. Oh, unless you haven't read much about what is going on globally. Uh, yesterday, this morning, and in your, on your own network, many African countries, yesterday Nigeria was where Ibadan were on, on, on demonstrations on high cost of living. The Naira has hit the roof against the dollar, uh, Liberia, South Africa, Egypt, Kenya, I need not say about it. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I went to a saloon and I heard the young man saying, Ish, Charlie, 
the Nigerians have come to Ghana. Who I hear they say their currency is now rotting. So people are running to this country. Eh? We went through it. But we have managed to stabilize it and we are going better, better. We are moving. Things are stabilizing. The inflation is going down. The uh, uh, exchange rate is stabilizing. There is food on the market. You go to Nigeria now, they are suffering. The price increases the way it's going. There's fuel. Our lights are on for all the time. The teachers are paid. We are able to provide them with chalk. So what are you talking about? We, we, you see, in the life of a nation, uh -huh. if you have done economic history, no nation progresses from day one till the end. There are some obstacles. Sometimes the pendulum will swing the worst ways. But the ability, mm -hmm. the nature that God gave human beings and leaders, people who are able to show leadership, leadership of service, like Dr. Baumia, who turned the tide. It's, it's part of a uh, uh, history of, of nations. No nation has seen through it positively or throughout the life. But, but, but it but, is the ability of leaders who emerge and the ability to bring those sufferings under control. That makes you. Your, your, your openness will say that if we take perhaps COVID and Russia, which has become uh, the main blame game, if you take them out, most of our suffering, uh, you know, self-inflicted. Indeed, the IMF and the World Bank warned before COVID came that the economy was not in good stead. That cannot be the case. Because everybody knew that our GDP before COVID, our exchange rates, our, our the economy was moving all right until COVID and then uh, ultimately uh, uh, Russia, Ukraine. Russia, Ukraine. You can't, you can't fault that. The, the IMF themselves have said that. And our former president, John Mahama, has said that at various fora overseas. So what are we talking about? But we are saying that that's the mark of a leader. Dr. Baumia will take this opportunity come January 2025, and tent is around. That's what I mean by look into the future. So, Mr. Manu, what, 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 what sort of campaign are you prosecuting? Oh, we have always done retail campaign. And when we say retail campaign, we mean touching the voter in the house, in the market, and whatever, rather door to door, than... Rather than like, Yes, that's, that's retail, rather than mass rallies. Is that the kind of campaign you are running this year? Oh, yes. And that's the best campaign you can have. That is the best campaign. Then you appreciate the voter, and you give him the opportunity to also ask questions about what is bothering him or her. So it's the best form of campaign you can ever get. Retail campaign. And, and how are you going about this? The retail. This retail campaign. When is it starting? Oh, how are you going about it? We have just introduced our campaign. Our campaign. Yes. The team will be launched and it will be drilled down to the polling station mm -hmm. and then from the polling station to the door to door. Tell me about Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. I should tell you about yes. it. Oh, he's the vice president of the country I mean, and I mean, the presidential I mean, candidate of the country. Convince me as a voter to give him, to, to give him my vote. I think. Despite all that is happening. If, 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 if you want to know Dr. Baumia, you see, we will not conduct our campaign along those lines. Because we will do a baseline study. That will tell us what the voters want. You don't know yet? Oh, you want me to come and sit here and pour my heart we out? We are talking. No. <laughs> No, the campaign, is, if it, the campaign team is yet to be inaugurated. Mm -hmm. Why should I preempt? You know, that, that cannot be the case. But what I can tell you is that you have to do a baseline study. Mm -hmm. Come out with what the voters want and match it against the capabilities of your flag bearer. Then that will also inform the manifesto committee what to put in the manifesto for the future.
a lot of a lot of surveys done and people we've spoken to their, their, their own personal economy appears to be the key driver in terms of how they want to vote in 2024 and i guess that reflects on, on on the generality of the voter population in this country the economy runs first because the more you improve the economy the more people have jobs people uh, people's standard of living improve now right now they say that what we inherited and what we have now there's a sharp contrast what we inherited mm -hmm. no i don't think so we inherited doom so uh your fm you are in trouble uh, you, you had to use generators and this will tell you that they, they, they almost fixed it oh. for the left bar everything they did it before the left bar but me and you and the ordinary voter the hairdresser the ice uh, thing seller knows that he didn't have light so it's not for it's not for what somebody will say but don't take the voters for granted mm -hmm. they are discerning and they know where they were where they have been taken. the dollar was two city two dollars to a city yes in 2016. Mm -hmm. it's almost 13 cities to, uh, to, to has it stabilized and then even if you say it's two cities to uh, a city and it's got into 13 cities if you compare that within the range of seven years to 2009 uh, to 2016 and look at the percentages you realize that the rise within that period is higher than within the period to 2017 to now you realize that so we will ask for data and figures and telling them where we are coming from and where we are. We will really... So despite really everything, you are so convinced that the NPP is much better than the NDC? Very well so. Very well so. And then you see, well, some people, including the NC, NDC, think that Ghanaians, oh, they will forget. But we will also bring it back. What are you bringing back? Under their tenure over a period of time, what was happening in this country. Yes, we'll bring it back. Oh, the records are there. We'll bring it back. The, the, the NDC is presenting John Mahama for uh, the, the next election. He's been a vice president before, he's been president before. He wants to finish his term. <laughs> Does he give you sleepless nights? Well, as I said earlier, no election is cheap and we will never assume that we are going to an, a, a cheap election we will work hard and fight the election that should be an is our mantra mm. so whether he has been a president before we know when he was president what happened to this country even without covid and in the absence of covid and the ukraine war we know what happened but we also know that vice president baumia is now becoming the president, the future. So he's talking about the future, and we are talking about the past. That is John Mahama. It's past. And we are going into the future, 2025 upwards. All right. Mr. Peter McManu is a member of the MPP's campaign team. We're just having an interaction with him. The party uh, formed the campaign team for election 2024. A tall is 40 of them. Their main task is to ensure the re-election of the MPP in 2024. There's a tall list of advisors, including former President Kufo and uh, Nana Odanko Kufo, the current president. This, I mean, th this is the first time we see something like that. What is the, what oh. the motivation behind it? I know that this it's not the first time. And president before, but to capture mm -hmm. them. But it's, the not, it's, not, it's not the first time. You see, experience matters. Mm -hmm. And... We say election is a science and an art. The art part is something that you have done repeatedly and have gotten good results. So when people have done some things and have gotten good results, you need to tap into their memory, their experiences, and use it for your own good, for the benefit of your uh, team, the campaign team. Mm. So people like President Kufo, who for the first time in this country won elections from uh, a, a certain government. Mm -hmm. His experiences, we need to tap into it. People like Nana Dodan Kufuado, who won the highest margin, over one million votes, against 
uh, uh, an incumbent, his experiences, we need to tap into it. So I think that it's good to learn from their, their experiences and tap into their, their memory for the good of the campaign team. So, so, so for somebody who is campaign chair and campaign manager, what, 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 I mean, educate me on their exact role. Oh, this is very simple. In, 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 in I guess, in, a, a, what's the name of your, uh, Joy FM, mm -hmm. you have a board chairman, you have a chief executive. The board chairman will call the meeting with the agenda. Then the chief executive will come and narrate where we are. You ask questions and give directions and policy to the board chairman, sorry, to the chief executive to go and fix it with his team. It's, it's I understand, but in terms of policies, cook. Hey, it's the same. I, 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 did not, I did not be. I did not going to be conflating roles. I am telling you, it's the same. If the chief executive of Joy FM and the board chairman do not conflict in any way, then I don't expect the chairman of the campaign and the manager to conflict. No, no, it's very simple. So, what, 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 what are you? Are you going to do a nationwide tour to to pick ideas in the development of your manifesto, like the NDC is doing? But I have told you already that we do a baseline study, mm. and I know that it will be done, and based on that, the manifesto committee will have something to work on. Mm. Yeah. So everybody will have his own way of doing things. Whether they will go around, whether we will use the baseline, it depends on... And you know, every election is unique. Mm -hmm. You can't compare 2024 elections to... Uh, 2016. So how, how, how unique is 2024? We want to break the eight. So it's unique. Something, something, and, something, and some people, something that has never some, happened some before. People, <laughs> that makes it unique. Some people also know that if they lose the election, it will be a big disaster to their party. So the stakes are very high. Very high. That demands hard work mm. and understanding of the entire campaign machinery, electoral machinery, and all that, mm. and how to marshal your forces, your base, and bring in new elements from the opposition to cross the 50%. And you, well. you, you don't think that because you want to break the eight, there's a possibility of voter fatigue? You know, we, we, we become used to changing governments after 80 attempts. You see, Ghanaians are discerning. And day in and day out, we are learning, and our democracy is maturing. I mean, uh, uh, Buhari was president for two terms, eight years. Nigeria renewed and gave it to uh, um, the current president, oh, uh, Tinubu, Tinubu mm -hmm. from APC. So it does not really matter. But how they see the party, how they see the future, mm -hmm. how they saw the past. This will affect their thinking. And I'm telling you that we also have the base. MPP has the strong base as a party. Oh. It's a very strong party in Africa, in Ghana. And don't joke with us. Don't joke with us. And we understand the nitty gritty of elections. We have been bullied in the past, from 92, 94, when people didn't even have a, a card. Mm. voting card but we've gone through that and matured so our maturity from the days of uh, 1992. the stolen verdict we've learned a lot out of that and I can tell you that we are a very strong party and our leader is a very efficient one Dr. Mahmoud Bogomia has another you know uh, issue to deal with and that is the selection of the running mate. What, 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 what is the discussion around it? Well, that, that discussion hasn't come up. It came up only for postponement at the National Council meeting because under the constitution of the party, he was supposed to uh, give us the running mate mm -hmm. upon a certain time frame. But the same constitution also gave him the opportunity that if he's not able to satisfy the time frame, he must come to National Council to seek uh, a change, mm -hmm. which was granted to him. So he's on course. And for how long is council not, going to wait for him to we should not pressure, present the we, candidate? We should not pressure him because in any elections, we have pre-election 
election and post election. We are now in the pre election era. We've done many, almost completed our parliamentary candidates. We have completed our presidential candidate himself and the appointment of a, a running mate, mm -hmm. which he will, after appointing, bring for the approval or concurrence of National Council. Will come very soon. But, 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 but Mr. Madman, you are very that, experienced. That we have inaugurated the campaign. The campaign team. We are on but, Mr. Madman, you are very experienced in this, but you've sat in many council meetings where you have discussed this particular matter. For you, what, what are the factors that should influence the choice? I think that that person should complement the flag bearer to enable us to win the election. Because in our constitution, the objective under Article 1.3 is to win political power through democratic means mm -hmm. eh? in order to pursue the party's agenda as provided for in the party's manifesto in the general election. This is Article 2.3 of the party's constitution. Mm -hmm. So he will need somebody who will complement him to enable us to achieve this objective under Article 2 of the MPP Constitution. The, the, I mean, it, and, and, and it appears to me, based on comments from some media members of your party, that the search has been narrowed down to the Ashanti region. Well, I can tell, because I'm not part of the search team. But if it's narrowed to any region or any multiplicity of regions, so be it. What is important is whether that person can help us achieve the aims and objectives of MPP as set out in Article 2, 3, which is to win political power through democratic means in order to pursue the party's agenda as provided for in the party's manifesto for a general election. And it will not matter where the person will come from, the region especially. As I said, we need somebody who will complement Dr. Baumia to enable us to achieve this objective, to win political power mm. and break the eight, make history. We, we, we have heard names like Dr. Matopoku Prempe as a front runner. Mm. We've heard the education minister. We've heard the first deputy speaker of parliament. Are these same names that you know or working with? I know more than that. <laughs> so the search is wide. <laughs> it's going on widely. <laughs> but you see, ultimately, I trust the judgment of Dr. Baumia. Mm -hmm. I trust his judgment that he will bring somebody who will complement us, him mm -hmm. to enable us to achieve this objective. I trust him very well on that. Excellent. And that person shall will come from the Ashanti region? Well, if that is the case, nobody will be worried. What we need is somebody who will complement him to enable us achieve our objective as enshrined in Article 2, 3 of the party's constitution. And, and this matter did not come up yesterday at the council? Oh, no, no, it didn't come up at all. And, and, and you don't know when you'll be ready to present such a person? I don't know. But... Whenever he's ready, a meeting will be called. Yeah. Just I have sat, like you said, I have sat in these meetings from Professor Duba in his era through President Kufo mm -hmm. and how to Nana Kufado. Uh, to Nana Kufado and how the vice presidents are introduced and the, the discussions and the debates and uh, ultimate approval, etc. So we'll go through. Is it the case that the, the, the flag bearer has the ultimate word in this matter? He has the ultimate word, but he will consult the National Council. Mm -hmm. I think I can read that for you mm -hmm. under our Constitution. Which means the National Council can reject the candidature. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't have to get to that level because the Vice President we we'll do a lot of consultation. Mm -hmm. Look at Article 13, 3, 1. Right. The party's presidential candidate shall, in consultation, in consultation with the National Council, 
nominate the vice presidential candidate. So he is bound because he shall to consult the National Council to nominate his vice, the vice presidential candidate of the party. It doesn't say that he, he requires the approval. Well, he didn't say that, but he said in consultation. So how to interpret in consultation? But because we have gone through that historically since 1992, we haven't had any trouble with it at all. And like I said, Dr. Baumia is an excellent person. And he knows how this article, article uh, 13.3 can help us achieve the objective mm -hmm. of the party, which is to win political power in a democratic way. At the meeting that he asked for more time, and up to now, he's not, he's not gotten back to the council, he must be under some sort of pressure because there appears to be all manner of... Oh, I don't think he has been under pressure, attention. but he, he needs time because there are so many other things that were uh, activities that were lined up. You know, it was only on 27th mm -hmm. of, of, of January that we had our uh, primaries for sitting MPs. Mm -hmm. As we speak, there are about two or three constituencies which will be completed by next week. Yeah, and the NDA, uh, Kapim South, the NDA, and of course, Sunani East. And then Sunani East, where uh, nominations have been completed, the date will be set for the vetting and then uh, voting, ultimately. So these are all matters that should concern the flag bearer, because he wants also to win and get a majority of seats in parliament. It's important. Right. Mr. Manu, we are bringing our conversation to a close. Yesterday at the council meeting, did the subject of changing the majority leadership come up? It came up, but it, it came up in the sense that it was on the agenda, mm -hmm. but the general secretary and the chairman, the chairman dropped it, that they need further consultation with the members of parliament. It was not discussed at all? No, no, no. The mm -hmm. only thing that was done was that it's on the agenda, but it's going to be to be stood down for further consultation with our members of parliament. So therefore, the, the proposal to, to make some changes has been muted? For now, because I came here as I sat down in the lobby, mm -hmm. and I saw uh, Honorable... Yes, because I will need uh, your reaction to uh, that. Honorable... Uh, Joe, Joe Weiss. Joe Weiss speaking to the press. Yeah. No, I, we, you know, we've changed things such that we think that uh, previously, it was the party which made the, or we chose the, the leaders. The leaders. Mm -hmm. But we changed our rules to make, because we felt that the members of parliament must have a say. Okay, you don't just sit outside and impose people on and them. Impose people on them. That, that, that does not conform to the internal democracy. But who, who is the proponent behind this motion or this move for? A reshuffle of the majority leadership. It must come from them. That's what is. That's what. But therefore, somebody within their rank is oh, proposing that that should happen. Yeah. That's what is. And the person did, was not given the opportunity to justify his move. Well, the ball was thrown back at them. That go back and then have a discussion with the members of parliament, mm. and that's the the end result is what I just saw on your screen. So Joe jo White says they will resist any such move. Well, if he has the majority, fine. I, 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 unless, because nobody has come up against what maybe is too early in the day. Mm -hmm. So let's see if anybody will come up against what Joe Weiss said. So therefore, finality has not been brought on this matter. It is still a possibility that there could be some changes. If some it. group of MPs think that they can uh, also stand up and then there will be a debate, a discussion, and then a vote, which will then ultimately bring it to the council. Mm. Then the process can be restarted. Mm. But for now, between the time that I saw Joe Weiss on the TV, I haven't seen any opposition. So let's wait and see. All right. Mr. Manu, uh, as, as, as you speak to me, I'd like you to speak to my audience Yo. and then tell them why your candidate should be given the nod to continue. I think we 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 have always said that the man has the future of this country in his 
thinking to bring economic recovery, to bring the current mood of global geopolitics, which is digital economy, into this country. He's spoken about agriculture, how he intends to build up our agricultural sector, how industries should build up, how our financial systems should operate using digital mechanisms. And yesterday, how even transport could get their revenues mm. with their card, the swipe of a card. Some say that is not new. Your Muhammad Tami had the well, same thing done. Well, everything you say, NDC will come up as it would. But there's evidence backing that. So where is it? Where is the, the yellow bars? Where is, where, is it? It where is the yellow bars? Where is the yellow bars? <laughs> My friend, uh, you think that yes, they don't see things there eh? and they don't feel it. All right, let's leave and see what will happen in December mm. 7th. And, 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 so, and, and, so he's a man who is a team player and prepared to work to recover the economy as, as it has started mm -hmm. already and bring it to further heights okay. in the future. So the future is good from educational point of view, from health. Look at the way that Agenda 111 is going, agriculture. And there is one thing we need to also talk about. That's the climatic change mm. and its effect on agriculture. And he has proposed that. So he's a brilliant man. Mm. He's not corrupt. Dr. Baumia is not corrupt. And I will hammer that. Because some people try to stain him with all manner of lies, peddling lies about him because he's not stained in any way. That's the kind of person we need. And I, I, are you, are you I, I said last words, but are you... Does the MPP have any proposals ahead of election from, from the electoral commission point of view? Are there things that you want the EC to do? If he brings their, if the, they, bring, the, the, if they bring their, the program, their program, okay. then we'll know certainly. All right. Yeah. So Thank we, you. we are waiting for the program next week or so, as Dr. Bosman said. Then we will look critically at it, and maybe at IPAC or at another forum. Because if you ask me now, mm -hmm. we sent our reforms package to them after the 2020 elections. For example. If you ask me about collation rooms at the uh, constituencies, I have always said now and then that people who don't have accreditation must not be allowed into the collation room. And when they enter the collation room, the EC must provide chairs and tables for them because they are supposed to write. Right. But if you leave them standing, then they can throw their hands pugilist. <laughs> That's not good right. because that can bring chaotic situations and then later you will see people don't want to go away and then uh, a shot is fired and all manner of things. So they must prepare the, 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 the collation rooms properly and admit only people who that the law accredited yeah, to be there. Those who are accredited to be there. Mm -hmm. Street enforcement. I have attended several or have observed several elections in other countries. Nigeria, Kenya, and others. If you are not accredited to college, you have no business there. You have no business there, yeah. strictly speaking. Okay. And the atmosphere is serene. Then you will sit down, you have your pen and paper at the table. After all, it's, it's calculations, mathematics. Then you can add up and subtract and know that you are losing. Right, Mr. Peter McMenu is the is a member of the MPP's campaign team. He's in charge of electoral affairs and We've been having a conversation with him. Mr. Manu, thank you very much for coming. Thank Wish you. The very best. That's Hopefully, true. next time we meet, we'll be talking about your, your, your running mate and the other matters. This, <laughs> this is a pause. My name is Elton Brebo. We'll take a short break. Hassan Ayariga will also be joining me and also take you to Parliament where the Ghana Cocoa Board has reviewed to the Public Accounts Committee uh, that the company uh, lost over 150,000 metric tons of cocoa beans to smugglers in 2023. Why? And what are they doing to reverse it? We have details for you.